Welcome back. Uh, continuing the chat from half time. C can you can you out there help? Oh, James, you're too young. You're not going to be able to. I'm going to be able to remember it. Yeah, 1990. I think December the 16th, 1990, or around about that. Sheffield United's 16th or 17th game of the season, looking like certain to get relegated. I mean, just come up under Dave Bassett and a home win, a really tense home win against Nottingham Forest. Okay, which yeah. I was at. Yes, I was. I. <laughs> <laughs> but and you I, were playing it. I know we won it. It's the first time we won all season, to be fair. And it was the it was the Saturday before before Christmas. Uh, I can remember that. And I thought I thought we won four two. You uh, could be right. I was. I've always thought three two, but. I think it was, uh, my memory of you is the waves of forest pressure towards the end, you're hanging on desperately and you're claiming cross after cross in the days when goalkeepers came and caught the ball mm. as you always did. That's my memory, but whether you've got a late goal to make it 4-2? I, I can't remember. I can't remember, so someone, so hopefully someone's going to let us know. Yes. Yeah. In both, yeah. You don't know, do you? I wouldn't lie. <laughs> I, I, I hey, certainly can't help you. Paul Taylor from <laughs> one of the monster trucks, he can't uh, help us. Uh, James We've got to be to join us. James's roundup will include ice hockey and all sorts of stuff yeah. and netball. Sheffield, we've got Sheffield Sharks guest coming up in a week or two. Brilliant, brilliant Mike great stuff. Coming Mike's back. great bloke. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant stuff. And they're actually all sort of skip ahead a little slightly on here and just say that they are actually at home tomorrow night. And the clip we played on the show last week was just you know if if you haven't seen yeah. it, go back and watch the second half of the show from last week. See the clip of the incredible dunk, it went viral. And if that isn't something that's going to make you want to go down and watch the Sheffield Sharks, I don't know what will. Dirk Williams, wasn't it? Yeah, Dirk he, Williams. He, he's, he's that score. Have you ever seen this, by the way? Uh, here, here we are. This is, this is an edition of War of the Monster Trucks from way back in the day. It doesn't actually have a date on it. Oh, sorry. But <laughs> Ina Sharples is on there. He's brilliant. Though. Give us half a light ale and none of that Worthington rubbish is, is there. It wasn't <laughs> a reference to Nigel Worthington. No, it was a reference to Worthington Cup because they sponsored the League Cup for a while. Ah, time. that's right. Yeah. So in here, like, so we get this column here. This is great. Alan <laughs> Smalls, the journalist. Yeah, Alan Smalls. Not Alan Biggs, Alan Smalls. And he's, uh, is it, is uh, it having a go at me? I think it might be, yeah. Is oh. it having a go at me, Paul? It may have been, Alan. <laughs> Sorry, to our eternal it. shame. I think you should keep that character alive. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I might bring that back. But, this, I mean, I could appreciate that. There's some criticism I get. that I don't. There's places I don't look. Mm. Don't, let's put it like that. Mm. And I know there's yeah. places lots of journalists look, because what you don't see doesn't affect mm. you. Mm. So you don't, don't look for it. But I, I was quite happy to look and, re and read that. I found it quite flattering. But th there's a style of criticism. Do you think it's gone a bit too far? Um, yeah, a bit too sharp, a bit too. I think know, it is. A bit I, spiteful, I, rather. I think it is the social media thing, isn't it? I mean, it, it's very different to back in the day. You know, a bunch of daft lads putting a fanzine yeah. together in, in somebody's room, to to people just viscerally firing out whatever comes into their head, sort of thing. And I think people people are much more barbed. You know, feel more comfortable to be that barbed. Yeah. Do you feel that being in, involved in the hot house of football? I mean, you're still involved in a management team at Chesterfield. No, no, I feel that when you read that, I think the Blades was, what was the Blades one? It was... Flushing Blade. Flushing Blade, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Yeah. And I used, to, I used to quite like it. I quite enjoy it because it used to be the banter about the other, what happened, was going on in the other side of the city. Yeah. And I always, I, I used to enjoy what, um, reading it, to be fair, so mm. I quite, I quite like it. And it should be fun, shouldn't yeah, it? Of course it should be, mm. yeah. But it's you know, tasteful as well, it's a publication, you know, it, some of the stuff you see on the forums and whatever mm. can just sort of go a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Just I, I mean, the, st the stuff about the, the about the blades. It was really just, you know, what can you do with pictures of pigs by and large, and that sort of thing. It wasn't. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't really all that severe, yeah. you no. know. <laughs> We're in the transfer window, folks. So I don't I never get managers on. I don't, I, one exception, Carlos came on during mm. a transfer yeah, window yeah. once. Yeah, he did. Uh, but I, I haven't put a request in for Joss Luhukai because I, I know he's only finding his feet, and I mm. pretty well know what the answer is. Um, it's a question you might not be able to answer, but I'm, I'm reading uh, today about Bradford City making a bid for Christian Dennis, so, uh, you know, I, as, a, as a support of Chesterfield, I want him to stay, and I'm sure everybody does ideally. Anything on, no, happening so, on that? No, certainly we want him, we want him to stay. He's our top goal scorer. He's, mm. you know, we're, we're, third, we're third from bottom, and he scored 15 goals in, in, this, in this season. So we certainly we want we want to get up the league. We certainly want him to stay. So it's going to have to be some sort of bid to prize him away in this tra in, in this transfer window. So mm -hmm. I've, at the moment, I've not heard anything. Well, I've, I mean, the, the rumour or the understanding was of journalists closer to it than me was that it had been rejected anyway from Bradford City. But I would imagine in the real world they're not going to be the only club that's kind of sniffing around. 
Yeah, well, you know, it's I've been in I've been in a, a club like last year when Charlie White went from Carlisle, mm. and to be fair, he went on the last day, and it 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 rocked us, and it probably cost that probably cost us promotion. Yeah. Um, now, the, we, I, w I wouldn't be recommending Celtic getting rid of your striker in, in this in this window um, because I think it's a very hard window to replace. Um, so I, I, I can't I can't see him moving. Can't to replace full stop in that league, isn't it? And it's not about costing promotion. It's about possibly costing a place in the football league. That's that's what's at stake here. Of course it is. Certainly, it certainly is. And that's a that's our short short term aim. Our short term yeah. aim is to make sure we can get quickly get enough points on the board to get us away from there. And also keeping the club attractive to buyers. You know whatever happens there behind the scenes. Um, yeah, I think it's also trying to. Uh, for for to get players in in as well, we need mm. to get try and get players in who and at the moment when you're second or, or bottom of the league or you're third from bottom, not many players want to come and join come and join you. So it's, uh, it's so it's we know we've got to pick up points. We know we got what we got to do to to actually climb the league to actually try and encourage to get players in. Mm. Jack Lester strikes me as doing a very good job there in difficult circumstances. I thought it was a brave call mm. to to give. A first timer as a league manager, a, a job like that. Um, I think he's got. I think he's got the, the massive backing of the supporters. Um, yeah. Even though we've been on a good, a couple, a good run and a bad run, he's a, the, the support has been fantastic towards him. I feel he is going to be a manager that's going to go higher. Um, he, <clears throat> as I said before, that he, he, what he wants, he wants these teams very hard working. He wants them the fittest in the league. He wants them to, you know be forward thinking, um, a lot of movement ahead of the ball. I think he's going to be one of those managers we're going to watch out for in the next, in, in the next few years. Mm. Yeah, wouldn't disagree with any of that. Mm. Uh, Paul Taylor, is, is Josh Luhukai going to be a, a manager that we should look out for? I know he's, he's not young, he's in mm. his early 50s, I, I think, uh, track record in, in Germany of promotions. Um, left field appointment, yeah. took us, in fact, we were, we were in this very studio two or three weeks Googling ago. Googling it. Yeah, I remember it, yeah. yes. Yeah. It, yeah. It's very exciting. <laughs> it just broke while we were on there, the first yeah. link to him. I mean, I mean it, 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 yeah, it's taken a bit of a chance saying because this guy can get teams out of the second tier in Germany into the top, then he can do the same over here. But what we've seen of him so far, I say that he does have a quiet determination about him. Um, and it's quite interesting with the transfer window because you sort of think, well, he's got all these players to get fit. We really want to see what he can do with those. But you'd imagine there will be the odd, we've already seen one, the odd signing from, from either from Holland or from Germany. A defensive midfielder's coming. Mm. Um, and I wonder what that says about long term Sam Hutchinson because ideally you've mm. got your number one choice there. You couldn't get a better player for that, mm. for that role. Mm. If. And the huge if he stays fit, yeah, and also available in terms of discipline, you know, sending off. Yeah, it's such a challenge with Sam because I mean, frankly, if, if it wasn't for the fact he keeps getting either carried off or sent off, he'd be playing in the Premiership. You know, he'd, yeah. he'd never been released by, by Chelsea. So, it, so it is frustrating. But obviously, if we can get get a bit of strength there, so that we, you know, we can effectively cover for Sam, then then great. Do you think that, you know, that Cast was sort of almost lambasted towards the end for playing that kind of, you know, slow, almost, you know, say negative, negative football? Yosla Hukai sort of strikes me. I don't know that at the minute there's the injuries and that kind mm. of thing. At the moment, he's not he's not really playing attacking football. He's no. all much no. better organised. The players seem to mm. be fitter and buying mm. into what he's mm. about. But again, do you think that a bit further down the line, when, once Wednesday are kind of in a better position perhaps, do you think that's going to frustrate some of the supporters once again, the same kind of feeling? Yeah, I mean, I think he's got a bit of time. We were saying in the first half, basically, he's, he's got very little to work mm. with. He's, he's worked out that he needs to get the defence right, and that's great. And I think everybody's going to give him a little sort of period of grace to, to get that sorted. But then, obviously, we're, we're not exactly banging the goals in at the front. Yeah. Um, so, we're gonna, you know, he's gonna need, we're going to need to see how he's going to develop that. And, and once he starts getting all those, you know, sort of classic yeah. midfielders back, and, and if he can... It's still a bit of confidence into the likes of Jordan yeah. Rhodes, then then he can turn it around. Well, I, I thought that uh, Lucas Shaw was beginning to show something mm. in the Cardiff. I wrote a column on it today. I just just feel that he's tougher, yeah. able to take knocks, able to give out knocks more than uh, yeah. in the English game. I don't know if you've got a view of that, but you I thought, to be fair, I thought he was so. I thought he was okay in the uh, Sheffield Derby. I thought he'd done okay yeah. in the Sheffield Derby. He looked he looked, he looked the threat out of the both of them up there, um, and I think something anything could happen off him. I think he's one of those who can get you a goal from nothing. Mm. So yeah. he's, 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 he's one of those. And, yeah. Talking Sheffield Derby, we can't leave it behind without just reflecting on those two fantastic saves at either end. Oh, absolutely. You Incredible. Know, Incredible. One by Joe yeah. Wildsmith from Clayton Donaldson, I think, yeah. early in the yeah. second half. Eh? 
uh, and then an even better one, perhaps. What do you, what do you make of that one first? Well, I thought the I thought the Joe Wildsmith one from from the header was was excellent because I was I was when when I saw it I thought that was in. I thought yeah. It was a, a fantastic save, but I thought the save what the Simon Moore made was a better save earlier on when it took when they, when the, the cross come shot came in and yeah. bodies got across him and he held, actually held on because if he didn't hold on to that that was a certain certain go if it right. if it had come out and I thought that I thought that was a, a better save than the actual the other one. Sometimes yeah. a goalkeeper will see it differently and more mm. technically. You mm. know the difficulty degree. Mm. The one where he was on the ground, he could be bashed yeah. in the ribs yeah. Yeah. and yeah. picked himself up to deny yeah. Adam Reach. Yeah, no, I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought it was an excellent Sorry. save. I just thought yeah. the, the other save was more difficult and right. more difficult in the actual because there was bodies in front of him and he had to he had to um, grasp it because there was people waiting to put that ball in the net. But you yeah. thought that was in Paul, that how, one. How good would that have been? We'd have dined out on that for the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> a, a light yeah. snatch goal, brilliant. It did yeah. stun everybody into silence. Mm. It was yeah. some save. Uh, we'll talk about Simon Moore's been a guest on this show. And yeah. You never know, he might be in again. Yeah. Uh, Right, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yep, I, and I, I'll run through the various goalkeepers that you've dealt with this season. You know, you've you've had a, a whole load of them, some really yeah. promising ones. I've, I've not been, I've not, I've not been lucky at the moment. I've only been in the, the ch uh, Chester for the last couple of months, and I think I've gone through four goalkeepers already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> You're just careless. Absolutely. We'll three days. What was it? Brains of a rocking horse. Was yeah, that Dave yeah, Bassett? Yeah, that was quote? Dave Bassett's comment. It's, yeah. it's my, my, my mother didn't like that comment when she read that paper. <laughs> How surprising is that? I <laughs> know. Yeah, uh, we'll come back and talk about likes of Aaron Ramsdale, etc. After James has done us the round. Absolutely. Yeah. The FA Cup weekend. So the Blades are at home to Preston on Saturday. Could it be the return of Chet Evans? A chance to get. A bit yeah. of a one-up over a side on a roll with a similar kind of stature as everyone kind of, you know, sort of <coughs> everyone's talking about that kind of thing, aren't they? And yeah. I know the attendances have been gulp, but it's the same kind of infrastructure, isn't it? A chance to get a one-up perhaps over Preston in that one. Either way, you can expect changes from probably both sides in that one. They're not attractive games, Sheffield no. Wednesday Reading. That's going to be mm. a classic tie. Or, or Sheffield United Preston, but it's it's what being the the fifth round can mean. Correct, mm. absolutely, yeah. Not a derby, please. No, thank you. I've just seen you survive the last <laughs> one. I don't want another one of them now. The thing is, you talk about that Sheffield Wednesday you know at home to Reading tomorrow night um, yeah. and is it a chance to get a bit of a feel-good factor back I don't know yes you know, I think absolutely so, yeah. gone a little run yeah. you know all of a sudden you I agree. Position, well, it's yeah because the league the league's looking too much of a, a wrench right. now isn't it so if we can just get a cup run that'll be that'll yeah. cheer you, us you up mean you're looking up We've, yeah, we've started I'll be, I'll, looking, I'll looking we've behind begun, you. We've begun to look up, Mr. Tracy, yes. <laughs> yeah, so that, one's, so that one's tomorrow night. And the Blades match, by the way, against Villa on Tuesday. Now, that's actually going to be televised now as well. Yeah. So if you can't get to the lane, um, you can get to the pub or watch it at home for that one. Uh, Non-league sides, we cover weekly um, each show here are Hallam FC and uh, Sheffield FC as well. Sheffield FC, they drew 0-0 uh, last week at home to Stanford. They travel south to play against Newcastle Town. We've had that one before. Um, it's near the Stoke <laughs> area, of course. Um, I can't get him, can I? No, you can't, can't do me again. Him. You can't do me again, I'm afraid. Yeah. You did the first time, I think. Um, yeah. Hallam FC, they're mid-table, and they've got Wordsborough away from home. Uh, Sheffield FC ladies, they've got Tottenham on Sunday at the Coach and Horses ground. Right. That's a really mouth to match. You know, if you've it not got anything is. on Sunday, get yourself up there. Let's, let's kick off tonight. 2 p.m. Right. Um, get up, up there. Fantastic standard of football. Mm. You know, Tottenham ladies, Sheffield FC ladies, brilliant. Women's Super God, League I might try and get them myself. I was a busy weekend, that's a problem. But Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I'll try and get myself up there for that yeah. one. A great one. Get involved in that. Uh, Rugby Union, Sheffield Tigers, they're ninth in the league. And guess what, Alan? There's eight defeats now on the spin right. for them. Good job. They had a good run before that because it's still mid table. They play against Tyndale, they're fifth placed in that league. Uh, that's their game this weekend away from home. Sheffield, though, they've actually dropped to the bottom of the league a narrow one to the team who's leapfrogged them against Wharfdale last week. Uh, shame for them. Uh, Sheffield Steelers, Milton Keynes away on Saturday, Belfast at the arena on Sunday, and Wednesday is the Cup semi against Cardiff Devils. So ice hockey fans, big weekend for the Steelers. Cardiff Devils, they beat uh, the Steelers, I think it was eight times out of 12 matches they played at the really? last year. Yeah. Yeah. So they'll be looking to try and yeah. turn that one around because they were their nemesis yeah. last year. Uh, in basketball, the Sharks, there um, they starred last week in front of the BBC cameras to beat uh, Newcastle. They're in the BBL Cup semi-finals. Brilliant for them on a little roll again. Be interesting to talk to Mike Tuck about mm. tomorrow's game, as I've already mentioned, they're playing against Manchester at the EIS. And we'll finish off with... The news that uh, this week that Yorkshire County Cricket Club might be coming back to Sheffield. I know you'll be loving that, won't you? Yeah, Bring absolutely. them back to Abbeydale Park. Um, yeah. That'd be fantastic. They're actually formed in Sheffield at the Adelphi Theatre 
in 1863, so they'll be coming home finally, which is great, because it's, it's been about 20, 30 years since they played a first-class game in Sheffield. So. Yeah, I remember seeing Yorkshire play regularly there mm. uh, in my Radio Hallam days in yeah. the sort of late 70s and into, into the 1980s. Yeah. I've seen Boycott score 100 there, and I know Fantastic. I saw Viv Richard score a massive 170 or something like wow. that. It was the only time I ever took my wife to watch cricket, and... Uh, it, it, we just sauntered down there. Well, I said, there's some cricket guys. She said, oh, do we have to? So Viv Richards was knocking it to all parts, right? So after about an hour, she said, uh, it's not as bad as I thought. You yeah, know, of course. Cool. I said, well, you're only seeing the world's greatest batsman, you yeah. know. <laughs> not bad. If we have someone like that down at Albert Park, that would be great, wouldn't mm, it? We'd yeah. love to see some more cricket back, back down there. And the facilities are better, and they've levelled the field yeah. off from, from what it was. You, you, know, couldn't, you couldn't take them anywhere else after that while well, seeing Viv Richards, could you? No, no. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. No, definitely not. Um, all these goalkeepers, then. Uh, so you go into the loan market, you get, you've, you've had one from Sheffield United, Jamal, uh, not no. Jamal, uh, Jake Eastwood. Yeah. And you've had one from Sheffield Wednesday, yeah, no, Cameron Dawson. Your what, thoughts on those yeah, two? Yeah, what, what happened? We had um, a goalkeeper broke his arm in, a, in the cup game. Um, and we just had a look around. We had a look around, come up with a list. I come up with a list. And I like, I like my goalkeepers that, who have the attributes to play higher, uh, but are hungry and want to go and play. Mm. And just give them that opportunity. Um, uh, we had, first of all, we had Cameron Dawson from Sheffield Wednesday come in, done very well for us, group, very good personal, personality in the dressing room. Um, but Sheffield Wednesday recalled him after two games because they, of the injury to um, Westwood. Mm. Um, we was disappointed with it, he was disappointed, but it, it happens. Then we needed someone in, it was, it was emergency loan, so we, um, then I'll, with J Jake Eastwood, Jake Eastwood came, came in. Didn't let himself done 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 well in done well in the games, um, but we already um, <coughs> had uh, Aaron Ramsdale earmarked for the, tra the, the when the transfer window open mm. opens. Um, so Jake went back um, and Aaron came in. I tried to get Aaron um, at the start of the season for Carlisle United, and it was close to coming off. We could, couldn't quite get it over the line, um, but <coughs> he was my number one target. Then and he was, you know, from when the window opened, he was probably my number one target again. Uh, he's came in. He's um, he's a fantastic character. Um, he made two mistakes in his first game at Accrington. At Accrington, mm. but his um, personality, his character, um, I knew it wouldn't be a problem for him. And he and to you be said fair that. to it, I saw you quoted at the time yeah, saying that it won't be a problem. It yeah. won't be a problem. Mm. And, I, and and he's come out and, he, and he's done fantastic. Fantastically well, mm. he's going to go. I feel the kid will go to the top. Um, he's very, he's very young at the moment, but he's got some fantastic attributes, and one of them is he's a mentally strong kid as well. Uh, how well off are Sheffield Wednesday for young goalkeepers at the moment yeah. with Joe Wildsmith and, and Cameron Dawson? I mean, Excellent. Mm. I think it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it, 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 just when you look, and maybe at Cameron or now Cameron's the older one, maybe his pathway's just a little bit blocked there at the moment, mm. and he's got he's got some thinking to do. Um, to be fair, because at, at that age, you want to start playing. You want to go go out and play. You know, he's, he's, the, these keepers have gone past under twenty three football. They need mm. first, they need starting even first team football. And yeah. your, your view on Simon Moore, obviously had an unfortunate injury, but you, you can sympathise, it cost him his so, place. So, 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 you know, that's, it's part and parcel of Graham, in, in the injuries. You, you've just got to make, you've just got to focus on, not, um, not about what's happening out there, about returning to full fitness before you yeah. can even think about challenging, and that's what you have to do. Uh, Jamal Blackburn, I know a little bit about him because he had a year on loan at Wickham when, we was, when I was at Carlisle, so I see him quite a lot. Um, J Jamal, um, he's a big lad. Who'll come, and he's got a, v a very big presence. Um, <clears throat> he's done quite well, but you know, it's at some stage, you do have that little, little bit of, uh, you go through a little bit of a dip. In how how you come out of it? Um, so I think both of them had it, and both of them, and at the moment, Simon was playing well, and he's the one who's got the shirt, so he's, he's down to him to keep. A really it. big commanding uh, presence. How nice is it for you, as a Wednesday fan, knowing that you know Westwood probably won on his day, one of the best keepers in the division, mm. if not the best, and then he gets injured, and you've got two cracking goalkeepers there. Yeah. It's nice, isn't it? That? It's going to be interesting to see what happens when Westwood's fit yeah. again, because mm. I think it, you know you can't see he's just going to walk I, straight back into that. I, it might be heresy to suggest it, but if. A sizable offer came in, and if Sheffield Wednesday are up against FFP, mm, yeah, and yeah, if yeah. they need to yep. generate some funds, and you've got two exceptional young goalkeepers, 
I think you've got to seriously consider it. That's a view that not everybody would agree with. No, I mean... Of I, an outstanding I mean, goalkeeper. No, I, I, I mean, I really rate and love Westwood, but I take your point. You know, we've, we've, we've got an embarrassment of riches at the back, really, yeah. and, and with, you're right with FFP, we, we need to make some hard decisions like that. So, yeah, I think it's, yeah. it's a possibility, Alan, yeah. Well, let's have a look just finally at all the, the managers that uh, you've served under, Simon. There's so many. I've, I've worked out there were eight at Sheffield United, including... Acting managers, it was Bassett, obviously, Kendall, Howard Kendall, Nigel Spackman, Steve Thompson, who was in touch today. Tomo, still uh, a big fan of yours, said, What a nice guy you are. Well, I, that, I, yeah. I actually did play with him, to be fair, and he lived down south. And we, we, he used to give me a lift back up to Sheffield when we went back down south together. Yeah, to be fair. So, Steve Bruce, Adrian Heath, Russell Slade, briefly, Neil. Neil Warnock. Yeah, yeah. For the, so I was, I was at Sheffield United for 15 years, the first seven and a half years I had Dave Bassett and then all of a sudden I had seven managers in the other seven and a half years, mm -hmm. so yeah. that tells you a lot about what happened in the, the yeah, seven and a half years after, after Dave Bassett. It was chaotic, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it? a bit chaotic, yeah. yeah. So. You had a lot of chairmen during that time mm. as well, I seem to remember as well. Yeah, I enjoy, yeah. I, look, I enjoy, I enjoy playing for all of them, to be fair, there's not one yeah. I can real sing, you know, obviously Dave Bassett, I, enjoy, I really enjoy playing for Dave Bassett, I enjoy playing for Howard Kendall, to be fair as well, so mm. it was, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy playing for plan for more. You think he was a bit overpriced by the way, he, he, when he went to join Sheffield United from Wimbledon he cost seven and a half thousand pounds. Unbelievable that isn't it? Would even buy you a nice car that would it? Well no, to be fair you wouldn't. know I, I can remember I, I, you know I come up I've been in 88 and um, I, it, my, my career at Wimbledon finished a little bit sour. Um, I, I made my debut in a charity shield. Wembley. Uh, in the charity shield. Starts at Wembley. Sh charity mm. shield and I was out of contract at the time. And the manager offered me offered me the contract um, after after the charity shield, and I, and I and I refused it. I turned it down. I thought it wasn't it, it wasn't nothing to do with the, the money. It was more the incentives. And we played. We then we played Arsenal, and I thought we was one nil up. And I thought, God, this this is easy. This is yeah. you know one nil up, and all of a sudden I make the mistake. We get beat five one. And I can remember the manager called me in his office on the Monday, mor Monday morning. He said to me, "He said, I bet you wish you signed that contract now." I said, "No, I didn't. I knew I was going to. I was going after that. I was only a 19-year-old kid." And um, and Sheffield United got in touch. Um, and then I had a London club as well. And it wasn't just about a football move. It was about a life move as well. You know, I I I've got fantastic parents, but I had everything done for me. From when I was a young kid, I had everything. I didn't have to do nothing. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to make a cup of tea. I didn't know how to wash. I didn't know how to, know how to do anything. And I thought, the, 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 and Dave Bassett said to me at the time, he said, come up and see what Sheffield Chef was like. I went, Sheffield, where's that? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I went up for the weekend, and I had a fantastic weekend. I really enjoyed it. And um, I thought, I'm going to go to Chef just because of... It's, it's, challenge, it's, a, it's a life tra change. It's actually, you know, a, a young kid go, growing up as well. It's just one about football. And um, I, can't, I come up and I've, I've not gone back. I've had a fantastic, it's, it's been fantastic. I've been so, so enjoying many it. players on both sides of the city that's applied to Correct. who've signed for a Sheffield club and have stayed. So many people. It's, yeah. Yeah. Players, it's, it's a familiar story across, right across mm. the city, and you're still here now. He's still got the and accent, but he's yeah. not. No, no, no. When I go home, the, 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 when I'm down there, the southerners say, no, no, you've got a Yorkshire accent. Yorkshire accent. No way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you're from an area of London that might. That my family was from going way back, a Charlton sort of area. Yeah, College, was, yeah. yeah I was, my yeah. granddad was a Charlton supporter. I, saw, I, had, a season I had a season ticket. Right. So all that, all that, so what a fantastic hey, ground that was, by I know, the show's just finishing. Right, Ten right. seconds left. <laughs> it's been brilliant. Thanks ever so much. Uh, Paul Taylor, Simon Tracy, James Gregg as ever. It'll be on my YouTube channel this evening. Repeat at 11. A great show lined up next week. See you then.